I'm backing up my truck, I'm gonna hook it up, loading up my boat with all my gear. I've been working hard all week, trying to make ends meet, spending time wishing I was fishing. Well, Terry Wickstrom wants to take you fishing. Gather up your gear and come along. Well, Terry Wickstrom wants to take you fishing. This is Terry Wickstrom. Join Karen Collum, Greg Collagio, and me as we take you to some of our favorite fishing spots from Colorado to Minnesota, the Arctic Circle to Central America and beyond. As we revisit episodes of Mountain States Fishing and Angling Adventures Television on the best of fishing with Terry Wickstrom. Hey, I'm reviewing some sonar logs. This is the neatest thing. Take um, like my new Lowrance 334 or any of the higher end Lowrance units. This is my 334 ice machine. But you can put a chip in like this when you're fishing. Record not only your GPS points, but all your sonar activity and what the fish did. You can go back and review where you were, what happened. So I'm looking at that. I'm looking at a chart we did first ISO, that North Michigan Reservoir uh, up over Cameron Pass in Colorado. I tell you what I'm going to do, I want to get you out there to North Michigan Reservoir. We're going to show you a little bit about fishing first ice, how you approach a lake like that. This is the day after Thanksgiving. We're going to be out there, we're fishing for rainbow trout using our Lowrance 334 ice machine. Show you a little bit about the lake, about the electronics. Then I'm going to come back here and explain some of the things we were talking about on the chart while you were watching the show. Now, because of the clothing we have to wear now, I'm wearing my ice armor suit from Clam Corporation. You don't, on nice days like this, you don't always need a shelter, so sometimes you're better off to be a little light. In fact, my auger and my rods are back at the truck right now, and I'm parked because of North Michigan, I can park so close. Got my sonar with, not even sure if I'll take that out yet, and I got my ice chisel. This is my number one tool when I'm not sure of the quality of the ice. And I walked along the shore, there was actually some water by the dam and the shore that had run down. I chopped through it, found out it was fairly thick ice, just mushy on top. But if you look out on this ice, you're going to see that uh, it has frozen and thawed and refrozen. We've got this snow, mushy, this snow cone looking ice, this frosty looking ice, and we've got very, very clear ice. The strongest ice is clear ice. The mushy ice isn't as strong. So what I'm going to use this chisel to check as I go. If you don't have a chisel, at least use an auger, but a chisel really works good. Now, I, I don't even want to start stepping out here because I might get my boots in. So what I'm going to do is I first I'll, I'll whack it with my chisel. If that doesn't go through, then I can probably approach it a little bit. And now I'm going to just chisel. And what I've done here is I've just chiseled the soft, mushy ice off. And I can see there's clear ice underneath. Because this mushy ice, no matter how thick it is, just isn't good to walk on. It's snow cone, it'll break real easy. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to see how much solid ice we got under there. Okay, now it's, there's two, three inches of ice there, which is marginal, but we're by the shore. And I think as we move out, it should get thicker, but I want to be careful. I don't want to turn this into a tragedy. This is my fun day. It's my first day ice fishing. So as I move out, I'm going to check the ice as I go. I'm really going to whack this ice. I don't want to take a chance on a weak spot. We'll check it good here. We'll check it good here. Now we can see we're getting to this change in color. I'm going to put my sonar down and be very careful as I approach this. Now it's starting to change the character of the ice here, which means it could be cut from underneath, could be spring, there's a river that flows out in the lake, could be many things, or it could be great, just the wind that moved around was freezing. But we don't want to walk out there without really checking it. It's good. It's, it's, it's on the marginal end, and I caution everybody to be safe, but it's more than safe. We've got good thick, that good clear first ice is the strongest ice and has the most give to it. Now we've got another character change right here as we get to where it changes color. We're not going to approach that color change without checking it, because that would be foolish. Now I'm going to stand right on this edge to chop that hole, so I want to do another another manual check of the thickness, not just visual. And I can feel the honeycomb dice, and then I can feel where it gets solid. I got a good three plus inches of solid ice under there, so that's good. So I'm gonna go 
I'm going to get my fishing gear and come back out here. Now that I know I've got fishable safe ice, we're going to set up right here and we're going to move. And this is a good area. It, it drops off quick. We're going to probably be cruising shallow. I'm going to start, actually start deep and work my way in a little bit. Try some different things. Saw some fish on the electronics. As soon as we catch some, we'll mark them so I can transfer them to my handheld. So join us in just a few minutes when we get back and we show you ice fishing, first ice, North Michigan Reservoir, State Forest, Colorado State Park up in the Walden Gould area. Okay, we're back out here. And I told you it's a beautiful day. I don't have my shelter. I should have brought a little sled with me, just a little kid's plastic sled, because I have enough stuff where it's a little difficult to carry on one trip. Another great thing you can do is a five gallon bucket. Um, these sonars are built so they'll sit right down in a five gallon bucket and, and then you carry, you put your rods and your tackle right in there, you turn the bucket over, it becomes your seat. My little tackle box is going to become my seat and I'll use that, I'll sit on it or I'll kneel right by the hole because I'm going to have to do some checking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill some holes with my auger and by the way, this time of the year, six inch hand auger. A six inch hand auger with sharp blades will cut quicker than a power auger and because I don't have a sled with me or anything I want to be really light. But I'm going to drill a series of holes between here and the shore then I'm going to start checking them and fishing them with a spoon and see if I see any more trout. If I see them and can't get them to bite I'll change presentations. If I can't I'll move around a little bit and try to find some. You see how quick and easy that is? There's no reason to haul a power auger around this time of the year. And this is a laser auger, so I can set it in the hole I chipped out, and it will actually clean that out. A lot of augers won't do that. They'll, they'll, they'll bind up in there, but the laser from Strike Master will. Now I'm going to make about four or five holes, because this time of the year the trout can be very shallow. Another great thing about North Michigan Reservoir is they have, ca they have camping here year-round. They also have cabins and yurts, and we've got pictures of the cabins. We'll try to show you the cabins and yurts during the show today. Those are available for winter camping. They sleep six people, six people, and they're only 60 bucks a night. You can virtually walk out onto the ice and fish from them. I love it up here. This area above Cameron Pass, one of my favorite areas in all of Colorado. Now we're gonna get set up here. Exit that. Now my GPS, there's a GPS built in here. My GPS has told me that it's locked on my location. So if I do come across some fish and catch them, I'm going to be able to just hit a button and mark that spot with an icon. And I'll save that onto a chip that I can put in my handheld that I can come out here with later. Now let me show you a couple other neat things I got with me today. You know how many times I rig up my ice rods ahead of time, they're always all tangled up? Well, from Clam Corporation, these nice little things that slip on, this elastic piece that goes over, put those on your rods. My ice rods are all rigged up, ready to go. Don't have to worry about them tangling up because they've got the little rod thing to hold them. Got my Swedish pimple right there. I'm going to drop this Swedish pimple down with nothing on it and just see if I see any fish to come look at it. One of my favorite lures to start with is a Swedish pimple. Now I can see it going down on my sonar and there it's down on bottom. Now I'm going to lift it up just a little bit and I'm going to work it. Now a fish even if it comes in may not hit it but what may happen is I'll see those fish if they're there and if they don't hit the Swedish pimple I can put a little bait on the Swedish pimple or I can go back down with the jig. There's a fish down there. I can see him on the electronics. So he just swam up, looked at my jig and swam away and moved down. That's so neat. You can see him come up. He looks at the jig. I'm going to jig a little more aggressively. See if I can get him to move in. Got him to bite once. Or not, maybe not him, but one just like him and, or one down there. It's so exciting on your electronics when you can see here's something moving in. I can see him coming up towards. I'm going to stop it now. I'm just going to wiggle it a little bit. There's a fish there. And he, gets, he moved away again. They're coming up and looking at it. I may have to change my jig or my what I'm baiting it with a little bit. But there's fish there. And it's so exciting when you can see your presentation. You see it moving. And you see the fish come right in and look at it. I mean, they're right there. They move up. They, they're right at the level of the jig. 
and and usually that's when you feel the hit it's almost like playing a video game but it adds so much to ice fishing because you know something's going okay there's another one there now i'm gonna let it sit real still this time see if he'll eat it no he went right on by above it wow go up above him and jig it hard he swam right right at that level and went right over it not interested seeing fish down here but i just can't get him to go yet had a couple little bites we haven't hooked any usually first ice the fish are very very aggressive so i expected it to be much easier than it's been so far but we just might be not quite in the right location we'll drill a few more holes do a little looking because i think once we find them we're going to numbers of them we're going to catch a bunch at least i hope so got them that time that's so much fun when you watch them on the electronics and you get to oh a nice one too i didn't think he was going to be that big whoa I tell you what, he came up and he bit and he came up and he bit. It was so much fun. I watched him come to the lure. I'm going to explain to you what I did to catch that fish because it was just so much fun. There's more down there, so I want to get him back down there. I want to get my bait back in, but I'll tell you what I did. Get him back in there. Nice rainbow, but I want to get back down there. There's more fish there. I need to get baited up and back in the hole right away. But what I did with that, he was... Um, He'd come up and look at it, and he'd come up and look at it. So I kept changing my jigging presentation and changing it and doing something just a little different each time to, uh, and he'd come at it and he wouldn't bite it. Finally, I just shook it real hard, just vibrated it with my hand, and then let it sit there. And finally, he couldn't take it anymore, and he ate it. And it worked out really good. Let's get back down there. His buddy is down there right now. So we're going to get back down there and see if we can get him. <laughs> I think we're in a good spot finally. We moved around from hole to hole, saw some fish. That was a nice fish. I should have given you a better look at it, but I was so excited because we're more fish on the electronics. Not keeping any today anyway. Maybe I should. I'll see. I mean, oh, there's one coming up at it already. Oh, he hit it on the way down. There's the one that I saw down there came up and hit it. He's still there. Let's see if we can get him to go. Uh, yeah oh yeah look at that didn't even get back down to bottom and had another one i tell you the electronics are so good wow oh man and there's more down there there's a whole bunch of them down there hold still hold still hold still no live bait either berkeley berkeley power uh a gulp maggot hold still ah oh. well come on well you know what you're giving me so much trouble that you're going to end up in the frying pan i think North Michigan Reservoir, we found the fish. They're biting like crazy. Uh, you tore up my jig. Just for that, you're gonna be lunch. I'll get back down there. There's fish down there. Last time, I couldn't even get the jig back down to bottom. I tell you what, when the action happens, happens ice fishing, you gotta go for it, because it can turn on and off so quick. And uh, you know, I feel like I'm 12 years old. Just get out here, get excited, having fun. You know, whether I'm fishing a river in Colorado, or the flats off the Florida Keys, one of my most important accessories are my Habervision polarized sunglasses. Not only do they allow me to see into the water, see the fish, but they protect my eyes from the intense UV. Habervision makes great high-end polarized sunglasses for men and women, and you can avoid the typical retail markup for high-end glasses by logging on to Habervision.com and using the member code FISHTECH. Hey, I tell you, what a great place to fish, North Michigan. We're going to get you back out there in just a minute, but you see me talking about what I'm seeing on the screen during this television show, and I want to kind of explain that for you. You know, a lot of you use chips like this when you've uh, used your sonars to record your positions, your waypoints and things, and you can transfer from one unit to another. This little chip goes right in this little door here in the sonar. This is also a GPS unit, so it's recording my GPS coordinates too. But a, a lot of people don't realize you can record uh, your, your actual logging of your sonar, too. And we're going to show you that. You can go back and study it. Now, if you had a unit like this in your boat, you could drive around the lake, check different settings, humps, and things like that. And when I put my cursor on it, I actually get my GPS coordinates. I'm putting my cursor there. It says bottom depth, 13.49. Cursor depth, 11.24, so I can see how deep I was. And then it tells me my GPS coordinates north with my uh, longitude and latitude there and the date and time I did this. So tremendous information. I downloaded this chip to my computer. But let me show you a little bit what I was talking about. We were watching and talking about the fish here. If you see right here, 
this line going down here, and by the way, I can adjust the, the um, settings on my sonar just like I was using my sonar right now. I can change the sensitivity like this and, get, and change the reading. We're going to leave it set about here for now. And right this, this line coming down is my lure right here. And I see this is a fish. Remember, when you're on the ice, ice fishing, unlike when you're in a boat, the fish aren't going to show up. These are all fish, and I'll tell you about that. The fish aren't going to necessarily show up as arcs because that's because the boat passes over the fish. You've got the sonar sitting on the ice. The bottom is stationary. The sonar is stationary. Anything that changes the depth or moves has to be a fish or your lure. Nothing else can happen down there because the boat's not rocking up and down. Right here, we've got a fish down on the bottom, this little hump here. And this is some fish activity here. This fish came up, swam up, went back down here. This is my lure as it's coming down as I'm lowering it down. Never even got it down to bottom. Right here, this fish came up, hit that lure, and I caught that fish. And that's me taking that fish back up to the surface. Let's start moving this sonar now, just like if we were watching it on, this, on the sonar screen. And this is how it would scroll out. Now, I've caught this fish. My lure is up here. I haven't put my lure back down. But see these humps on the bottom? This is the bottom. Anything that comes up here while I'm ice fishing has to be a fish that's inside the cone of my sonar. So I'm up here taking that fish off, and I see these fish down here. So naturally, I'm getting excited. I know there's fish, active fish down here. So here comes my lure back down right here. And now this is a fish right in here. And I'm jigging my lure just above that fish, jigging it. And here the fish comes up hits my lure and I catch it just like that. So I'm watching these fish down here while I'm unhooking the one I caught when we were back here further. Got down there, could see them down there. Some start to come up as I lowered the jig, lowered it just above them and jigged it. What else this did, I could see that fish coming up off bottom to go after my lure. So I stopped the lure and let him come up to it. I was able to work that lure. Then that fish went back down and went away from my lure. So I lowered my lure all the way down with it, right where he was, started jigging it. Saw him start to follow it up, so I lifted the lure, saw him follow it up, he started going back down, I lowered it back down, followed him with, on the sonar, and he hit it right there, and that's me landing him. Just incredible excitement, and it's such an incredible fishing tool. You can do this too, you just need a good sonar unit, like this Lowrance 334. Now Lowrance makes some other great ice fishing units, they make their mapping a 68 unit and the X67. Both very good units. Neither one of those will record though, but they'll do all this live for you. Tremendous tool, isn't it? It's just awesome. Let's get back out to North Michigan and do a little more live fishing. I wouldn't have dared to go like this without live bait in the past because I wouldn't have had the confidence in it. But the, 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 the things that, uh, like the Berkeley Gulp, have come so far that I think nothing anymore of heading off on an ice fishing trip with just a jar of artificials like these Berkeley Gulp natural maggots. And we'll give you some close-ups of those. I'd show you more right now, but there's another fish down there. And uh, this is about as good action as a guy can get, I'll tell you. There's one down there. He's, he's lifting up towards the lure even as I'm going down. I'm going to stop right here because he's almost up to my lure already. We'll see if he eats it before it even gets to the bottom. Oh, got him. It wasn't real active, but, um, oh, it's a nice one, though. Oh, 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 North Michigan Reservoir trout fishing. I don't, I've lost track already. I think we've got about five or six. We've been fishing for maybe an hour. The bite is steady. Once we found him, it was great. Nice trout, but that's just awesome. I'll tell you what, just awesome. I'm going to get re-rigged up here again because he stole my bait, catch some more fish. You know, normally when I'm fishing like this, oh, there's a fish down there. I guess I got to get rigged up. I'll tell you what, the action's been hot and heavy. There's fish down there, but we need a commercial break. I need to catch my breath. Lots more fish to catch, lots more to tell you about North Michigan Reservoir. You go to this commercial, when you come back, hopefully we'll be right here on this same hole. I'm down. Fish are moving up towards it already. There's a fish at my lure already. And he's on. That quick. I never got the lure to bottom. Never got it to bottom. Oh, it's 
pull in some drag. We'll get him. There he is. And this is going to be my limit, and I'm going to quit. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Talk a little bit to you about what we did here real quick and wrap things up. We let a whole bunch of them go. You didn't see them all on camera. Rainbow trout, North Michigan Reservoir. Beautiful, nice, thick eater trout. Take a few home. You know, this is a lake that's regularly stocked, and I wouldn't come up here every day and take a limit, but there's nothing wrong with taking a few fish home to eat once in a while. This lake is, is for that. For me, like a drive from Fort Collins, it's like an hour and a half drive or whatever out of Fort Collins. We're on Highway 14, just out of Fort Collins. We're North Michigan Reservoir. Uh, it's a tremendous little lake up here. You can fish it summer and winter. It's a great ice fishing destination to just come up and catch some trout. And there are some very big fish in here. In past years, I've caught browns up to 20 inches and rainbows over 20. Now, most of the fish are going to be from the stalker size up to about 14 inches, but they're nice, healthy fish. You catch a lot of them here. And like anything else, fishing is fishing. North Michigan Reservoir. Ice fishing, hope you learned a little bit about early ice, fishing first ice, being careful, how you move around, how you find the fish, and get out. You know, so what you need to do is find a place like North Michigan, get up here, do some ice fishing, enjoy it. You know, the, we talked a little bit about the clothing. This time of the year, you know, early in the ice fishing season, a lot of times it's warm, you don't need a hut. These new ice armor suits like I'm wearing from Clam just keep me warm with today's clothing, with today's shelters. There's no reason to not fish in the winter when you can have fun like you saw me having. And let me tell you folks, that enthusiasm was totally genuine. I am just excited and having a blast. It's going to be tough for me to quit and watch the camera people. You get up here, enjoy North Michigan, join us next week. I'm going to bring my baits over close to the camera and show you exactly, exactly what I'm rigging up here. You know, I'm coming over close to the camera to show you how I'm rigging up. I saw another fish on the electronics before I left. You have no idea how difficult it was to leave that. But I want to give you a good look at what we're fishing with. 